there's been a request for jurisdiction with termination of the outset, as well as a placement hearing or a removal hearing. We're scheduled for today. I've made some time for the attorneys to talk with their clients. I've had a brief sidebar with the attorneys, and I will let them uh, lay all that out on the record after appearances. Lee Heist, lawyer, guardian, and item. Ms. Taja Thomas, counsel for the department. Ken McCusick, work for the department. Michael McFarland, representing father. Please introduce yourself. Wesley Piper, father. Good morning, Your Honor. Ariel Berger here on behalf of Mother Emily Gerber. Emily, go ahead and introduce yourself. Emily Gerber, mother. All right. Um, Ms. Thomas, let's start with you on comments on the sidebar and how you may want to approach today's case. Um, thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> At the sidebar, we discussed um, the parents' positions and the department's position um, as it relates to this matter. Uh, the department is willing to withdraw its request for termination at initial disposition to allow the parents um, at least, or I guess the six month um, threshold to see if they can comply with and benefit from a case service plan. Um, and it is my understanding that both parents are uh, willing to enter into a plea for jurisdiction. Uh, Ms. Berger, would you concur? Yes, Your Honor, I would. Mr. McFarland? That is correct. I also advised the court went over my client's rights. He does not wish to have the petition read. And we would like to put our two cents in and testify regarding placement. Ms. Heiss, would you find this to be the in the interest of this child uh, for me to accept a plea under the circumstances outlined by the department? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Uh, for purposes of today's hearing, uh, Mr. McFarland did hit some of the things uh, that we also need to talk about. Uh, both parents have the right to seek placement, the right to admit or deny all the allegations in the uh, petition if they so choose, the right to have that read onto the record. Uh, the court has to inquire as to whether or not there are any other cases that concern this minor child, uh, which I, as well as whether or not there's Native American heritage. Uh, Mr. McFarland has answered in part some of that already. No Native American heritage on my client's behalf. Thank you. I'll, I'll go to you, Ms. Berger. Your Honor, I did not inquire, but I will. I, I can't do so. All right. Deputy introduced, we're in uh, Wesley Piper and Emily Gerber, please. Do you have any Native American heritage in your family? No, ma'am. Okay. And Judge, would you like me to take the plea now, too? Uh, well, uh, Ms. Gerber, do you know if there are any other cases that concern your child, child support, guardianship, or anything else? We recently was uh, sent a child support letter, but I'm unaware of what it's like pertaining to like why we're getting sent a child support letter. Okay, thank you. Uh, do you wish for the court to read the petition onto the record today? No. Uh, is it true that you wish to enter a plea uh, in this case? Yes. Understanding that they're asking for reunification rather than termination. Yes. Is that true also, um, Mr. Piper? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Any other questions before I go into the uh, plea, Ms. Berger? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. McFarland? No, thank you. All right. I'm going to review both of your uh, rights with you and go through some of the questions that we need to have answered in order to make sure that we can enter the appropriate. <laughs> Excuse me. If I accept your plea, you are giving up the right to a trial by judge or trial by jury, the right to have the petitioner prove the allegations in the petition by a preponderance of the evidence, the right to have witnesses against you appear and testify under oath at trial. You would always have the uh, attorney with you. You'll have uh, your attorneys with you throughout the duration of the case. They would be able to assist you with any trial or, or other hearing. You'd have the right to cross-examine witnesses, the right to have the court subpoena any witnesses that you believe could give testimony in your favor. Do you understand you'll be giving up or waiving those rights if you admit the allegations in the petition by entering a plea, Mr. Piper? Yes. Okay, Ms. Gerber? Yes. With regard to the consequences of your plea, or in other words, what will happen, the court will do the following. It will be continued investigation by the caseworker to see what the problems are in your family and how and whether they can be solved. The court could dismiss the case if there's no need for the court to be involved. If it appears that there's a problem that may be solved, the court can make the child a temporary ward of the court, placed with mother or father, with relatives, or in a foster home, and order programs for you and your child, such as counseling, drug and alcohol treatment, assessments, and parenting classes. 
If it appears that you will not be able to provide a proper home for the child in a reasonably foreseeable future, the court could terminate your parental rights. In regard to the plea itself, the plea can also later be used as evidence in a proceeding to terminate your parental rights. Do you understand the consequences of your plea, Mr. Piper? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Gerber? Yes, ma'am. Do you have any questions about any of the information I've given you so far? No. All right. Okay. Is anyone making you admit to the allegations in the petition, Mr. Piper? No. Ms. Gerber? No. Has anyone threatened you in order to get you to admit to the allegations in the petition, Mr. Piper? No. Ms. Gerber? No. All right. Outside the terms of the plea agreement, which as far as I can see is simply that they are going to be asking for reunification rather than termination, has anyone promised you anything in order to get you to enter a plea, Mr. Piper? No. Ms. Gerber? No. Would you say your uh, decision to enter a plea is made of your own uh, free will, Mr. Piper? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Gerber? Yes, ma'am. Are either of you under the influence of drugs, alcohol, or any other physical or mental condition that could get in the way of you understanding what you're doing here uh, this morning, Mr. Piper? No. Ms. Gerber? No, ma'am. All right. As it relates to the factual basis of the plea, uh, I'd like to offer to the attorneys at this time to uh, walk through with their clients what you believe the uh, factual basis would be for the plea, if you so choose, and that would obviously be in contemplation of our case services plan, which would be what we'd be asking you to work on. Are you interested in that, Ms. Berger? Your Honor, she will be pleading no contest uh, based on potential criminal liability. I believe it was numbers uh, 14 and 15 that alleged um, neglect. Uh, any position, Mr. McFarland? We have no objection. Ms. Thomas? No objection. Ms. Heiss? I don't think there's potential criminal liability. I would also wonder about that, um, Ms. Berger. It looks like these particular allegations have to do with unsanitary living. Uh, in summary, uh, how can help me understand how that could potentially be criminal? I believe that it could be turned over um, for investigation and um, possible charges, Your Honor, um, just due to the nature of the allegations. All right, if I would not be willing to entertain a no contest plea, uh, would, have you talked with your client about uh, entering a plea regardless of that? Yes, I do believe that she still would. I would like so, to ask. Yeah, go ahead. I'll let you do that. Emily, can you hear me okay? Yes. If um, they are not willing to entertain, entertain a no contest plea, would you be willing to enter a plea on the petition to get you to enter into services today? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, so back to my original question then, uh, would you like to walk through with her to identify the issues? Uh, I mean, I'm happy to do it as well, or we can ask Ms. Thomas to do it through Mr. Uh, Kuzic. What's your preference? I would prefer that the caseworker put the factual allegations on the record. Okay, Ms. McFarland? Oh, Your Honor, the, my client is just going to plead a car block, admit to every allegation against him, Your Honor. So I really have no preference, but that's our position. Thank you. All right, well, let's hear from Mr. Kuzic then. Come on up to our witness stand. I do have one inquiry. We're not using the children's minor names because we're being recorded. Is that correct? Thank you. Um, Mr. Cusack, how, how are you involved in this matter? I'm a CPS worker uh, who received the allegation for the case. And are you considered the investigator for the department? I'm considered the investigator, yes. Okay, thank you. And part of, can you just briefly outline um, the steps you took during your investigation? Let me go to backtrack actually one step. Did you draft the petition that's before the court today? I did draft the petition before the court, yes. Okay. And in order to draft that petition, what steps did you take in your investigation to learn about the allegations contained in there? So we investigated the um, initial complaint, which was that uh, it was unsanitary living. Um, and this led to us learning that, uh, or actually an admission um, by Emily, that there were cockroaches in the home that they were previously staying in. Uh, and so we... Uh, safety plan that the child would be placed elsewhere with a different caregiver. Um, 
And while the child was with the caregiver, numerous, well, twice, uh, the caregiver had to ask for uh, funds from the department for food for the child. Um, even though the parents uh, had WIC, uh, she said that they had not been in communication enough. They had to receive uh, help uh, fund food for the child. And I had been working with that current caregiver as well as a, uh, a separate caregiver who was related to Emily um, during this time. Uh, we had not been able to work out any sort of POAs uh, or uh, we had not also done uh, a guardianship, which we actually had a family team meeting um, with the entire family just to uh, make sure that, you know, we were putting all, forth all our best efforts for this. We were doing everything I can to make the child safe. Um, and I know the parents refused that limited guardianship at the time. Uh, and so the last issue was just, uh, I know Emily uh, has had issues with drugs, uh, substance abuse allegations in the past. They, both parents have been non-cooperative during this investigation. Um, they seem to only drug test when it's convenient for them. Uh, several days after the uh, initial offer for the drug test is, is asked of them. And so um, that's what led me to, to draft this petition. Do the parents have stable housing? No, they do not. Do they have a legal source of income that they're able to provide financially for the children? They, not as far as I know. Um, I know they have a private business, so. And you mentioned multiple caregivers, I guess a couple of things. So uh, this housing in which there were cockroaches or there was a concern about the um, welfare of the child, was that at any current caregiver's home? No, it was not. From the allegations, it was from a separate household that the parents were staying with the child at the time. And from that point, um, the parents, at some point, did the parents execute a power of attorney for a relative caregiver? They did, yes. Okay. And did that relative caregiver provide proper care and custody to the child while they were the agent of the parents? Yes, as far as I know, they did. Do the parents know who the children's medical doctors are? No, they told me they did not. Have the parents assisted in taking and getting care for the children or the child at um, medical appointments? As far as I understand, they brought the child to um, points for shots, um, vaccines, things like that, um, with the company of another caregiver, but no, as far as well child visits, that was done by a separate caregiver without parents there. Um, and, any of, and you stated that the parents have not been necessarily cooperative with the substance abuse screening. Um, was there a birth match for this child at birth? Yes, there was. And can you elaborate and tell us what that means, a birth match? So I believe it means um, there were substances in the child's system at the time of birth um, when the child was born. And it, would that also include that the parent has a history of, or is on central registry? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, and when the parents did screen, were there substances, did they test positive? Yes, they did. And for what substances? Uh, Emily tested positive for hydrocodone and THC. Wesley just tested positive for THC. Um, I don't smoke. Okay, you'll have an opportunity to testify or offer if you like. Uh, please be patient and try not to interrupt. Uh, okay, so housing and substances. Um, yeah, and I believe that that is, uh, well, let me just, and Mr. Cusick, how many, does this parent, does Ms. Gerber have uh, a history with CPS investigations and substantiation, substantiation complaints? Yes, she has a history with uh, substantiations as well as um, prior terminations, which we already discussed. Um, as it relates to the factual basis, Your Honor, I have no further questions for uh, this witness. Uh, Ms. Berger? 
No questions, sir. Thank you. Ms. McFarland? Would I ask you questions about placement, or would that be another worker who I, I would address those questions to? Uh, I think you could ask me. Okay. Uh, my, the child is with whom right now? Currently, a child is with um, Sierra Niner. My client is desirous of that person keeping the child. Uh, apparently, you've done a background check and screened this person as the child is living there, correct? That's correct. Uh, are you, is it your recommendation that the child remain there? Uh, it's our recommendation that child is placed with a uh, relative for placement. It's per policy. Okay. Is it your understanding that this current placement is willing to accept that position? Yes, the current placement is willing to accept. And this is somebody who's familiar with the family, correct? Yes. Would it be fair to almost say that this person's affective kin is like their family, although not biological? That could be inferred, yes. And they're willing to step forward to accept that responsibility, correct? Yes, though I should say both the relative and the um, 50 kin you're speaking of are, are willing, yes. Fair enough. Where does the relative reside? Uh, I believe the relative resides in the county. Um, Jasper, I believe. My understanding that the relative was investigated at one time as a victim uh, of crimes perpetrated against this individual, correct? Yes, in a, a separate prevention case, not a CPS case. That's correct. Okay. Are you sure that this individual who perpetrated uh, an act against this proposed placement would not be back and endanger the child? Can you give us that guarantee? I cannot. I do not know the details of um, what occurred there. Um, however, we can make sure that that's looked into. So that has not been looked into, correct? It has. I would have to speak to the prevention worker about that. Okay, who would that be? Uh, her name is Elena tomorrow. Is she here in court today? No, she's not. She's she's not actually here by Zoom. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. I didn't see her on there, so I didn't know. Okay. Uh, would you have any objections to uh, my my client, I presume both parents, having at least three visits per week, two hours a visit, which is traditional with this court? Uh, I would have no objections to that. And the court accepts their plea, you'd be willing to meet with them to discuss a case service plan, correct? Yeah, that's correct. And I presume that if there's some services they could get in before our next court date, the disposition, you'd be willing to assist them with that too, right? Yes, I'd be willing to assist. Although I was going to say if you think the ongoing worker, not you. Yeah, that's yes, that's correct. Nothing further. Uh, so, is the proposed placement a relative? Did you say? Uh, yes, it is a relative. Uh, how is this person related? Um, she's the half sister of the mother. Questions, Miss Berger. And no additional, Your Honor. Ms. Heiss. Um, the petition alleges that the mom and dad are married, um, but the mother's not using the father's last name. Have you, um, is it self-report that they're married? Yes, I think it was a self-report. And were they married at the time the child was born? I'm not positive on that. Uh, I'd have to double check and see if they were married then. Okay, and then um, isn't it true that the child is with um, a person right now who is unable to financially support placement without the aid of the agency? Uh, yes, based on our conversations, there have been two separate times and they're reaching out for funds. So it's the agency's recommendation that we move placement from where the child is today over to this relative with whom the child has been in care before 
the child is familiar with the new placement. Yes, that's correct. In, have you done, you know, your regular, I think, the form check of both households, the one that he's in now and the one that he'd be going to? Yes, we have. And both placements passed? Both were seen as appropriate, yes. And can you tell me why, what the preference is for the, the new placement where the child will be moved? That the um, new placement is a relative caregiver as well as um, the new placement has um, in the past um, assisted with the child, um, brought the child to medical appointments on, by herself without the parents as far as I understand. And um, the, the new placement also has assisted uh, with the family uh, several times as far as I know. The family entrusted the child to this new placement uh, through a power of attorney at one point. Is that true? That is correct, yes. Do you know how long that power of attorney lasted before the parents terminated it? Was it a month, a year? Well, he's not even here. About a month. About a month. Okay. All right. If the parents have uh, other... Strike that. Um, So this child is deemed to be the legal child of Wesley Piper based on marriage. Um, and that's not necessarily a biological connection. It's a legal connection through marriage, correct? That's correct, yes. Thank you. Nothing further. Redirect? Um, <clears throat> yes, Sean, I was not intending on looking at placement until after the pleas were done, but since we're there... <clears throat> Um, as it relates to placement, is there anything that you would like the court to know about <clears throat> the proposed placement with Ms. Smith over um, Ms. Niner that you haven't already testified to? Uh, yes, I know the um, parents lived with Ms. Smith um, for some time. And um, there had been a dispute and they had been, uh, they left Ms. Smith's home um, after several months. And I think that is it. Do you know how this family or these parents are familiar with Ms. Niner? I'm unsure exactly how they're familiar with her. Was Ms. Niner completely truthful and forthcoming during your investigation of her home? No, she stated, um, that there were not any others, uh, individuals living in her home. Uh, although when I spoke to her before this petition, she stated that, um, her mother and her younger sister lived in the home. Thank you. I have no further questions, John. Just three questions. Did you then ask, did your mother and sister move out of the home? Uh, I do not. So there's a possibility that she was truthful and that they may not be there, correct? That's correct. Okay. And the suggested placement of my client, isn't it true that this placement also babysat for the child and had prior relationship with the child, correct? That's correct, although I believe the babysitting uh, began about a month ago. Fair enough. Uh, if they were to tell you that was prior to a month, do you have any way to dispute that? No. Okay. And lastly, regardless of where the children are placed, there's going to be some money, some subsidy monies for that placement to take care of the child, right? Yes, that's correct. Nothing further. Ms. Oh. Berger. Thank you. Thank you. Did you... Um, investigate or explore placement with an Iris and Jim Curtis? I did not. Was that name given to you by my client? Could you repeat that? Were those names given to you by my client? Uh, no, they were not. Okay. Um, if I were to tell you they were licensed foster placements, would you have any reason to disbelieve that? No, I wouldn't have any reason to disbelieve. Okay. Would you be willing to explore them for possible placement of this child? Um, 
if the current placement uh, or new placement does not uh, work out, yes. So the child isn't currently placed with um, the relative, is that correct? Yes, child is not currently placed with the relative, that's right. Okay. And as far as um, parenting time with, um, if the child is placed with a relative, have you explored that with the parties yet? I have not explored that yet, no. Okay. And what would your recommendation for parenting time be at this point? Um, the discretion of the uh, department, they will leave feels appropriate for parenting time. Right, and what is that? I think we said three three days a week um, for two hours. Correct me on that if I if I get that wrong. Okay, I don't have any other questions. Thank you. Okay, Miss Heiss, no questions. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. I return to your seat. Anyone else you'd like us to hear from? Um, with Miss Tomorrow joining us on Zoom, I think that we can just clear up any of the issues with the proposed policy placement. Is uh, Alina Tomorrow can you hear us? Okay. Good morning, Alina. Can you just briefly um, tell us your role at the department is a prevention worker, correct? Yes. And um, can you just briefly describe or elaborate what that means for the rest of us? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so um, it is the prevention program with DHS, and um, it is with. Um, basically working with children's services um, clients that um, on a voluntary basis. However, um, there's not an open CPS case. Um, they just may have had history in the past. Um, and so we reach out to those families um, and ask if they're willing to participate. Myself, and it's basically just helping them with whatever their needs are. Um, if that's helping them with budgeting, helping them with, you know, finding resources in the community, I'm kind of like that bridge to prevent further um, CPS involvement. Thank you for that. And there's um, some testimony that has been brought out today about the proposed placement for this youth, this child, um, uh, uh, Ms. Kelsey Smith. Can you briefly elaborate on? to the best of your ability without breaking any privilege or confidentiality that you're bound by, um, what services you offered um, and whether you believe that that's an appropriate home for a child. Uh, yes, absolutely. I've been working with Kelsey for several months now. Again, it's completely volunteer. Um, she not had an open case, um, a substantiated case, case, I should say, during my time with her. Um, and she specifically... Um, requested help with with one of her sons and just finding services for him um, and exploring that. Um, yes, he was previously diagnosed with the spectrum. And so we have been looking into like that. And then I just helped her with- that, she cut out. Yeah, if you could try to get a little closer to your uh, microphone, it might help and slow down a little. We don't have great audio in the courtroom. Thanks. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, um, Kelsey had requested services to help, um, prevention services to help with finding resources for one of her sons, um, specifically with the autism resources, which are very hard to navigate. So that was kind of our main, uh, our main goal for prevention services. And we meet monthly um, and to go over whatever other needs she has and concerns. Thank you. And are any of the children or minors that are in the home a risk of harm to themselves or others that this child wouldn't be safe there, in your opinion? No. Thank you. I have no further questions. Ms. Berger? No questions. Mr. McFarland? When you say there was a substantiated, let me get where you can see them. Great. I was buried in the corner there. <laughs> When you say there was a substantiated case, what do you mean by a substantiated case? It, it may have cut out. I meant there have been zero substantiated cases. Whereas, Thank you. yes, no CPS has, no abuse or neglect has been confirmed in her home since I've been working with her. For so you did cut out. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. the other key is to try not to talk over each other because that will automatically stop the comments coming from Ms. Jamal. Thank you. Was this placement a victim at one time, uh, and that was investigated? I'm not sure what you're asking. Okay. You're talking about the proposed placement had had no substantiated cases of any type, correct? While I have been working with her for over six months, there have been none. And have you also explored any past history uh, of this household, such as was the proposed placement a victim of a crime or domestic violence or anything of that nature? That may be the case. I am not familiar with her entire history. So that's not a question that you ask uh, if she's ever been a victim and if an aggressor could return to the scene, you don't explore those questions? Not in prevention, no. Nothing further. And text? No questions, thank you. Any redirect? No, Your Honor. Any other witnesses? No, Your Honor. Very well. Uh, as it relates to the plea, uh, Ms. Berger, would you like me to uh, finish that and then we can continue our discussion on uh, removal and placement or how would you prefer? Yes, Your Honor, I would, I would prefer that we finish the plea and then I would call my client as to her testimony as it relates to placement. That's your problem. I would agree. Very well. Uh, while the court is satisfied that the plea was knowingly, understandably, and voluntarily made uh, with a full understanding of the potential consequences, are the attorneys satisfied that the advice of rights and the factual basis of the plea are, are sufficient? Yes. I am. Yes, Your Honor. Yes. Thank you. The next stage of our proceedings is, of course, the dispositional hearing. Uh, we will continue the conversation about the removal and placement of the child pending disposition. But I have some dates for the disposition. And I'd like to run by everyone. Yeah, I would request the March 5th day if everyone's available, um, just because it allows the team a little more time to get that family committee in place and get everyone served appropriately and a decent report and support. I would prefer to make the as well. Okay, sorry, Ms. Berger, that was kind of mumbled on our end. Can you repeat that, please? Yes, I'm not available the 23rd, but I am available the 5th. At 1030? Yes. I'm available on the 5th also, Your Honor. I'm available as well. All right, so we'll set the disposition for March 5th at 10.30. Between now and then, you'll have to meet with the department to look at your case services plan, which should be targeted at uh, things like stable housing, employment, demonstrating that you're able to maintain a uh, sober, safe environment for the child. And then we'll look at that to guide uh, whether or not there's any progress in our future hearings. So uh, as it relates to the statutory uh, basis for the court to accept the uh, plea and to take adjudication. Um, I do find that there has been a violation of uh, MCL 712A.19B3 uh, to the extent that it does appear that uh, both parents uh, are unable to provide proper care or custody for this child at this point in time for many of the reasons that were expressed by Mr. Kuzich. That does include the uh, history uh, and demonstration of potential uh, potential continued uh, substance usage, uh, specifically by the mother, and potentially by the father as well. Uh, the need to establish stable housing, employment, uh, and a caretaking structure that's safe uh, for the child, which may involve uh, the need to look at parent education and counseling and some other services that way. I do find also under subsection J that there is a reasonable likelihood uh, that these conditions would uh, create a harm, substantial risk of harm, if this child were to uh, be allowed to be returned to the parent at this time. That's really more for removal. Uh, but so that particular provision, uh, the court does find, does apply. I also noted that there does appear to be some uh, indication of. Uh, use of substances by dad as well. And when you look at the operating while intoxicated, that was just back in 2020. Uh, so the prior history of uh, CPS involvement with a mother's case does indicate to this court that there is a need to look at that uh, environment created uh, by the parents uh, to remedy those issues and create a safe and stable environment for their child. 
All right, back to the conversation about placements. Did you say you don't have anybody else? No, Your Honor. Okay, Ms. Berger. Thank you, Your Honor. I would call my client. Okay. And we've had some discussions um, regarding the proposed placement for your son. Is that correct? Yes. And to the best of your understanding, where does the department want to place him? From my understanding this morning with my uh, half sister. And um, what's what's her name? Kelsey. And where would you prefer that your son be placed? With Sierra. Okay. And is that where he is right now? Yeah. Okay. He's been with her this whole time. And is she um, approved for placement through CPS? As I'm like finding out this morning, she got, she was not approved, which I'm not understanding because she meets all Kyler's needs. Okay. Her house is very clean. I mean, I guess I, I can say that I just don't understand CPS's process with approving and not approving. Okay. And um, was there another couple that you um, brought to the agency's attention? Yes, Iris and Jim Curtis. I told them, um, I gave them their name and phone number at the last family team meeting. I believe it was last week. Okay. And who specifically did you give that information to? I verbally said it out loud for Cameron and for Chelsea to write down as they were both in my apartment in my bedroom. Okay. Did they write it down? As I was understanding, yes. Okay. And you would prefer that your son be placed there um, versus with your um, sister. Is that correct? Yes. And why is that? Well, I mean, this is this isn't my first rodeo. It's my, it's my fourth, and I love my sister regardless of how she feels or what thinks what she thinks. But at the moment, there's a lot of resentments and animosity that me and her can probably get over so that Kyler can be with her. But to be honest with the court and with you and with everybody else, no. She has four children. She has, you know, a couple of them do, you know, have autism. They have a lot going on. She has a very good job that does take up her hours. I'm, I'm not going to have my child get placed with her so that there's more added to her plate. Sierra is a very good person. She does meet his needs to the fullest extent. Yeah, she's having a little bit of financial issues, but don't we all? Okay. And I have no, I mean, if it's financial financiality, that's a problem with Sierra, you know, for having placement. I, Wesley and I have no problem meeting his needs in more of a way than that. Okay. We get food stamps, we get WIC. And um, what concerns do you have with Kelsey's um, home in particular, if any? I, I've lived there before. I know how it is there. Right. And, but you know, there's a girl that lives there that has seizures. And I don't want my sister or Luke to be at work and then her going to a seizure and something happened and it involves my child. Okay. Do you have I any personally live there? I know how it is there. Okay. Do you have any concerns um, with the house's cleanliness or safety? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. What concerns do you have? Because Michaela, the girl that lives there, she's the one that cleans the house. I don't, and if my sister cleans, it's very vaguely. I've seen rat bones dead in their cabinets next to their food. Wesley and I have both been bitten up by ants at night when we sleep, when we were living there, you know, because she had a nap problem, which we all do. I get it. But I'm more concerned about my son. Okay. He's grown a bond and an attachment with these people because Kelsey only had him for a week, if that, when she got her POA. Other than that, Kyler was with Wesley and I, his father and me. Okay. Do you have anything else no. to add? Sorry. Is there anything else that you want to add today? Kyler knows Sierra and Tyler better than anybody. Also, 
his father and I. Okay. But all I can say is that I'm trying to advocate Sierra because, to be honest with you, I trust her. I trust her with my life and with my child. Just because she's not financially, you know, stable does not make her a bad person. She gets up every day and she goes to work. She takes care of my child. Five o'clock in the morning, she's up in the morning texting me, giving me pictures. Hey, good morning, good morning, good morning. I never go a day without hearing from her. We text from the day we wake up to the day we go to bed. She never denies me visitation to my child. She never denies me communication to my child. I know that if Kyler was to go to my sister, it would be much different. Okay. okay. I don't have any other questions for you, but some of the other attorneys may, okay? Okay. I have none, Your Honor. Since WIC is for minor children, you can willing to turn over all the WIC coupons over to uh, her, correct? Yes, sir, as we do every month. Didn't know if you did. That's my next question. Uh, food stamps. How much would you be able to give her in food stamps immediately today? Well, I get them the 15th, but I'd be able to give her 350. Okay. Okay. You said that nobody has a better knowledge of your child, because we're not going to mention the child's name, than the placement you're suggesting. She babysat, correct? Yes, sir. Can you tell us how she became so close in this child's life so the court knows there's a relationship? Sierra and I are good friends. We met about two and a half, three years ago, and she took me in off the street. I had nowhere to go. She literally opened up her front door and gave us a place to live. And how did she have a relationship with this child? You didn't explain it. This child, as our relationship grew and grew, and as Wesley and I got back together after our small break before the child was even born, before he was even created, before our marriage. Well, I'm talking about, let's just I'm go after the child. Yeah. And then Sierra, she was our maid of honor at our wedding. They, they're they so close to us, to where Kylie's been in their life since the day he was born. He has grown a bond and attachment with these guys. They babysit him very frequently, even before the case was even started. That's what I was going to ask you. How frequently is frequently? About, what was it, honey? Three to four times a week, maybe. So, so this child knows them. Is that what knows you're saying? Them. Okay. And how long has the child been with them now? Since December 22nd. Thank you. That's what I need to know. Nothing further. Oh, yeah, I do. Your sister. I don't want to get into particulars, but... Am I correct that she was a victim of some type of domestic assault or something like that? Yes, sir. In some type of way, yes. Do you know who the individual was who committed that? I know of, but I don't. Do you know that individual still has access to her house? He doesn't know where she still lives. She hasn't moved. She Perfect. talks to very unhealthy people that do know where she lives. I mean, that she just had a court hearing a couple, you know, about a year ago with a man that stalked her, and they, he lived down the road from her. Okay, did she have to get a PPO or something against yes, this person? Yes, she did. She went to court, got a PPO and all that, but the PPO didn't matter to this guy. This guy still stopped her. You have concern regarding the placement of your child in this house because of that? Yes, sir. The earlier, the first one I mentioned, was, was she assaulted by an individual? Is that your understanding? I don't know. The That's fine if you don't know. That, you don't but know. All I know is that he was very toxic, unhealthy. He was okay. doing drugs around the children. It's just, no. no. she tell you this? I've seen a video. Tell me, about, me. tell me about this video. In the video, it shows the guy freaking out while her two children are upstairs sleeping, and she's at work. Is this a YouTube or? No, it's her security camera. Okay. Okay. These questions I'm asking you. Did anybody from Child Protective Services ask you the same questions I'm asking you about the placement? Because she doesn't talk about it. No, that's not my question to you. My question was, were these questions asked of you by any CPS workers? Oh, no, sir. All I was asked, like, between Wesley and I is if, if there was any domestic between us. Gotcha. And that was after my car accident, and I had a big scar on my face. Thank you. Nothing further. Ms. Heiss? Um, Tyler started to stay with Sierra on December 22nd? Yes, ma'am. Why? We stayed with her because we were told, um, as we got a random call from CPS, that they had to get a hold of us because the placement was not safe for Kyler because of the roaches that we were living in at Jessica's house on Lawrence Street. And that day, that exact day, 
kind of was placed with Sierra because it was healthy and we didn't have anywhere else to go. The next day we got moved into our new apartment. So it literally took us less than 24 hours to find a new place that was safe for Kyler. And you took Kyler back then on December 23rd? No, ma'am, we did not. We wanted to wait for CPS to come and check out the house to make sure it was appropriate before he came back into the living situation. So Kyler's been there at Sierra's without you since December 22nd? Well, yes, I don't live there, but I do take him every weekend. Okay. You have been giving the food stamps and WIC benefits to Sierra? We just got our food stamps last month, so we weren't able to help her out with food, but we do give her our WIC benefits. And we were helping her out this month, as we already have prior talked about this about last week. When is the last time you had to certify for your WIC benefits? Mm -hmm. A couple months ago. Okay, and you reported to them that the child was living with you? No, we reported to them that he was living with Sierra. We had to turn over our WIC benefits to her. Why did you not give the Sierra a power of attorney or a guardianship or something to take care of your child? To be honest, because we didn't see this being so long. We didn't see it being so full term. We didn't even know about CPS coming into our life, like, you know, having cases open and all this. I know it's not my first rodeo, I understand. But as we were told, we we're trying to do everything the right way. We're trying to not cross over paths. We want to make sure that CPS, CPS wants us to find a new place. Okay, we found a new place. That check mark was done. But then there was more things that we had to do before Kyla could come back home to us permanently. There was a lot more to this. You had a uh, power of attorney for Kelsey at one point. Is that true? Yes, after I was tricked or not really tricked into, I didn't know how too much about power of attorney. It kind of got sprung onto us. We came to the courthouse when we did the power of attorney because I got served with papers of demand for possession with the people that we were living with. We asked the Kelsey for a ride up here, as she did, helped us out. But instead of going to find out about the uh, paper, we went upstairs and we did the power of attorney. I didn't know much about a power of attorney. So I'm just getting whatever information she's telling me. So I'm trusting her. Thank you, I have nothing further. Any redirect? Nothing additional. Thank you for your testimony. We return your seat. Anyone else you want us to hear from, Ms. Berger? Not at this time, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. McFarland. No witnesses. All right. um, Ms. Gerber, would you tell us uh, what was the date of your marriage? It was <clears throat> August 11th. So, so 7th. I'm sorry. I have too many dates and birthdays and weddings. <laughs> I just got too much. August 7th of what year? 21, 2021. So safe to say that uh, your child was born I'm 22, my bad. after you were married? Yes. Thank you. All right. Um, anything else? Ms. Heiss, anybody you want to see? No, thank you. Argument? Uh, your Honor. <clears throat> I think this court is well aware of um, this family and I think that the criteria met for uh, removal at this time has been met. It is contrary to the child's welfare to be with these parents if um, based on the plea have failed to provide proper care and custody to the child. Um, at this time, we're asking that the child be placed with the department for care and custody and placement. I mean, if this court is not satisfied with the department's choices, then we ask the court to do a directed placement so it can be county funded. Um, the department has done its due diligence in exploring relatives on um, its following policy. And if this placement turns out not to be appropriate, then we will obviously uh, change placement um, as allowed per policy. Um, and to be clear, Kelsey Smith is approved for placement, as is Sierra Niner. Kelsey Smith is a relative who has had a power of attorney in the past. The parents have lived there before. Um, and per policy that uh, supersedes for the, um, a fictive care placement and a uh, licensed foster care placement. Um, I have no further comments on that point. Thank you. Okay, uh, Ms. Berger. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. At this point, um, we are asking that you um, formally accept the plea of my client 
we have allowed her to enter into case plan services. Um, we are also asking that placement either remain the same um, with the individual where the child has been placed since December um, or be placed with the um, with the foster parents that my client have indicated. Um, I would ask for an order that they be explored as well um, for placement during this period. Um, my client has testified to the concerns that she has related to her half sister and the home there and maybe the chaoticness or the hectic, um, hectic schedules with all the other children. Um, and she believes that her child would be better suited where he currently is. So that is what we were asking for today. Thank you. I think there's some serious concerns that were raised by a mother that there's a PPO uh, that the proposed placement of the agency, the half sister, had against an individual who was stalking her, it sounds like. Nobody's denied that. And nobody's explored that. Nobody has asked my client these, this question. So uh, that there is something on tape. Uh, sounds like somebody was high, I think is what she testified. Uh, that was not explored. That was not asked. I'm not sure how thorough this investigation was. If these are just the questions that I ask as a matter of routine and this comes out, Your Honor. Uh, we did hear testimony, though, that wherever the child is placed, they're going to receive funds. That my client will turn over WIC. And the child client will turn over $300 a month for food uh, and food stamps. My client also supports that. But there is a bond. Child's been there since the 22nd of December. Uh, over a month child's been in this current placement, we're going to take the child out of a place where it's known and place it in another location yet again that does not seem like stability or finality. Uh, we've also heard testimony that there was a long-term bond with the current placement where the child is, Your Honor. So we would like an order maintaining this and also directing the agency to do some more exploration of these very important issues that were raised by mother regarding the other potential placement with a half sister, Your Honor. Uh, hi, Your Honor. I would ask you um, to order a DNA test in this case. The uh, conception may have been outside of the marriage, although the birth was during. That alone wouldn't qualify. However, in prior history, we have had a serial. Uh, parent uh, allegations. So what I want to avoid is getting six months into the case and having somebody else named as bio father. It's not fair to the child to stagger the cases like that. I would ask you uh, to have the uh, legally married father tested so that we can get that potential defense out of the way right away for the child. Um, I would ask you to consider that uh, placing the child in the Department for Care and Custody. They have heard what we've heard today, and I'm sure that they're going to investigate some of those things, and um, the child may have to go to foster care. Um, and I don't know about these folks in Hillsdale, but I, I know that this is what the agency does, and uh, I think they're the best qualified to uh, make a placement for this child. Thank you. Thank you. Well, the court finds all interested parties were given notice for purposes of today's hearing, including... Uh, all right, I respond to that. What appears to be a motion by the guardian at Lab. For DNA test? Oh, sure. Thank you. Your Honor, my client objects. He finds it insultive. So there is no testimony by mother that she was having any type of relationship with other, anybody other than father. Uh, he is the legal father. Uh, we assert he's a bio father, and we do not want testing done. Uh, but I can take testimony from mother, and I believe her testimony will be that she had intercourse with nobody other than father nine months prior, Your Honor. So we would ask that the court deny that motion. Any position, Ms. Berger? Your Honor, I've not been able to ex um, exp expressly explore this with my client, but I do believe that um, she is in the same position as father. Ms. Thomas? Your Honor, I spent nearly 85 hours on an appeal for this mother's child. Part of the issue was paternity. When she was married to someone else, had a child who was technically born out of wedlock. I agree with Ms. Heiss. I think that it would be a disservice to this child and to this community's resources to allow that to go unchecked. Um, with it coming up at the ninth hour, I think it would be um, a real disservice. I and mean, that's all I have to say on that point. Do you have an objection? 
to the DNA test. Uh, yes. We, I have no problem having the DNA test done. I'm just, I'm all I'm going to say is that it's a little offensive and it's a little bit of a waste of course time when I have no problem saying this man is his father. Good. Uh, I, I think to check that box is important. I think it will just confirm what you already have here, which right. is great. Um, but I do have to recognize that that has been, and if this helps you, this is an issue that arises as a result of the past case, not necessarily because of your current circumstances. Of course. So uh, I will ask you to cooperate with that DNA testing. Uh, I don't think it's too invasive, a mouth swab type procedure. Uh, so that will be part of today's court order. Okay. But I appreciate you uh, giving me your perspective. Yeah. And I'm sorry for the inconvenience. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, I am going to, okay, so back to the findings. All right. All interested parties were given notice for purposes of uh, today's hearing, uh, including the uh, discussion on whether or not removal is appropriate for this child. Uh, the parents essentially have. Um, agreed at this point that uh, they need help uh, providing a residence for their child uh, at this point in time to finish uh, securing housing employment and uh, demonstrating uh, sobriety and productivity in a safe uh, home for their child. Uh, I want to also honor their request uh, for placement and the fact that the child has been placed. Uh, Basically, this is kind of a safety plan uh, that could not be confirmed by power of attorney or otherwise, but has created a situation where this child is bonded with uh, Sierra Niner. She's, uh, he's been there uh, since December, and it will be the order of the court that the placement be under the supervision of the Department of Health and Human Services, but remain uh, with Sierra Niner until uh, further order of the court. And is also reflected with the testimony of mother where she indicated that this is a household that will um, create an environment where she can best uh, maintain that bond with her child. She's been able to do that. There's free contact, uh, safe, organized way. I didn't hear any concerns about that at all from the Department of Health and Human Services, but rather that the only reason for the preference would be according to department policy, which is for a relative. And I do not find that persuasive under the circumstances. So the direct placement is authorized by the court under the supervision of the department, and that is reflected in the court's order. I also did not hear any concerns about unsupervised parenting time for these parents. I, don't, I heard, in fact, actually, that there is unsupervised parenting time being exercised by both parents. Uh, understanding that we'd like you to drug test and engage in services as quickly as possible. I will allow the continued combination of supervised and unsupervised parenting time uh, pending our next court hearing. I do find that uh, the obligations of the department have been met in identifying the risks as are articulated by Mr. Cusick, as well as this court in taking adjudication. Also, that reasonable efforts to prevent removal uh, were made, and that this is the safest and least restrictive circumstance uh, for this child at this time pending our disposition. Uh, the placement is meeting the child's needs, uh, as well as the need to maintain the bond between the child and both parents. So for all those reasons, uh, the, those will be uh, the circumstances moving forward. Those findings are reflected in the uh, court order today and our disposition will be held March 5th, 2024 at 10.30 in the morning. Are there any questions? One, Your Honor, uh, would it be the traditional at least a minimum six hours parenting time per week? I would leave it to the department to organize that, but I think with the combination of supervised and unsupervised, they won't have a problem reaching. Thank you. Your Honor, to clarify, the court is already in directed place that will be funded by the county. As I understand it, the court order last time needed to indicate that placement was with the department, and then in the other section that the direct placement was what was being uh, done. If I need to revise that court order, let me know. I don't do the funding bit. Um, I understand I just, the need for funding. In case. Yeah, and I don't, I just want to clarify that there's, um, Fictive kin is likely not going to be funded unless there's a progress towards licensure or licensure. All right. Uh, we'll ask you as part of uh, the services moving forward then, whether it's uh, Mr. Kuzich or our foster care caseworker to work with um, Sierra, is that her name? Yes. Uh, on licensing. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Good luck. We'll see you March 5th. Thank you. Should they remain here for the order or? Sure. Okay. We don't know.